Welcome back. Angry Bitcoin investors are demanding answers after the exchange they poured their money into vanished. Mt. Gox is probably the best known exchange for swapping digital currency for US dollars and other currencies. But on Tuesday, the Tokyo based company's website mysteriously went offline, leaving investors unable to access their funds. The shutdown came at the end of a month plagued with technical glitches and a temporary suspension of all withdrawals due to, quote, unusual activity. On Sunday, the Mt. Gox CEO resigned from a key post. He hasn't been seen in public in days. For more now on what this means for investors and other Bitcoin exchanges, I spoke to Mark Williams, a risk management expert and a Boston University executive in residence. At this point, it's very uncertain, and investors should be very cautious. Regulators from around the world are coming out very vocally in the last two weeks saying to customers, in particular, investors, beware. Now, the uh, value of Bitcoins has varied widely. Uh, it reached uh, a high several months ago. Now it's back to a low. Uh, what is the future of Bitcoin if we have such wide swings in the value of the currency? Right, and that's a very interesting question. When we think of currency, we think of stability, we think of something you can trust, and something that has liquidity. Those three features right now Bitcoin does not have. It has extreme volatility. For example, in a given day, we can see Bitcoin move by 10 or 20 percent. That's clearly not a currency. It's more of a speculative commodity, and that's really how it's been traded. So we've had lots of speculation, and in, in December, speculators did well. Uh, January, they did okay. And now in February, they've done very poorly. Now we've heard of one exchange, Mt. Gox, which has gone insolvent. What about the others? Right, so it, it's actually precarious at this point. Mt. Gox was the biggest exchange two months ago. It looked like it was going to do well, and then all of a sudden it blows up. So we now have two large exchanges left that are going to do most of the volume of trading. And that's concerning, because one of the exchanges is located in Bulgaria, the other is located in Slovenia, with a bank that they use located in Cyprus. So in essence, these are sort of the wild west of energy, in this case, of, uh, of trading. OK, is this a problem that's going to be fixed? Are uh, the people who have invested, who run uh, Bitcoin, are they going to be able to restore confidence in this currency? They're going to be hard pressed. I think really the three things they need to restore confidence is number one, they need to embrace or accept regulation because it's coming. Uh, number two, they need to say, yes, we agree that consumer protection is paramount. And then the third is really that we need to use this currency, push it through the banking system, because that's a tested, tried and true mechanism, which has worked and it has controls, and we need to use that mechanism. But wasn't that the very reason for the creation of Bitcoin, that it won't be regulated, that it wouldn't have to go through the banking system? Exactly. I mean, the sentiments of, of why Bitcoin was created, it was actually in, at, at the peak of the, of the crash, by 2009, many folks were disenchanted with central bankers. They felt they were irresponsible. This is a way of taking control of monetary policy away from central bankers globally and giving it to the people. So it, it had a very populist view, but now we've moved from this virtual experience, this experiment, and we're now moving to the market. And the market's demonstrated that the experiments failed. Okay, let's go back to what you just said a moment ago. It's going back to the people. There is a mechanism within Bitcoin, the so-called blockchain mechanism. Did that fail here? Well, yes, the, the blockchain itself was set up to be a very transparent way in which to see all transactions. So in essence, uh, there's a website. You can go on and look at, at transactions. Every 10 minutes, there's a window. And that window, uh, there's, there's actually verification of each transaction. Will there still be an attraction for this type of currency if banks get involved, if there is some kind of regulation? Well, I'm sure the early adopters uh, won't be as much interested in this, this new currency. But if there is a demand in the marketplace and need for it, you know, not for sort of unlawful purposes, but, but for legitimate business purposes that can increase efficiency, reduce costs, increase speed, then there's a benefit. Uh, I personally, as a former banker, I see benefit in virtual currencies. I'm just not clear that Bitcoin is going to win that race. What happens to investors holding the currency right now? Do you fear there would be a sell-off? I am concerned about it. Uh, back actually at the end of November to beginning of December, when it had peaked at 1,200, I had mentioned that, that I thought we were in a bubble and it was going to pop. And then on December 4th, uh, in December 5th, China came forward and they said specifically, 
that Bitcoins were not accepted within their banking system. From that point on, Bitcoins themselves, the prices have dropped to 1,000, and then finally they've dropped uh, this week to, uh, we've seen lows of, of 400, and we've even had a day during the cr flash crash last week where it had dropped as low as $102. That was Mark Williams, risk management expert and Boston University executive in residence.